Dobro pajalobat, druzia, i dobre utra. Welcome to another video here, finally in Russia. I'm actually sitting on the bench uh, in front of Horseshoe Lake. A lot of you guys who have been following know that I built this little hideaway here in front of a horseshoe-shaped lake. And this is where we're going to start the beginning of the conversation of why I'm deciding to live in Russia. At 34 years old, it's quite a bold move, right? You have to restart your life, but it's never too late to restart. Not only do I want to tell you why I'm going to stay and build my new life here, uh, I'm going to be showing you, you know, I'm going to be taking you around these places that I absolutely love. Behind me uh, are a bunch of birch trees. This is like a birch tree, uh, birch tree forest. And uh, as time goes by, you're going to see all of this turn green. That is one thing that I absolutely fell in love with is the nature. Uh, obviously, we have nature in the United States. And a lot of people always say, hey, you could have gone to Alaska. You could have gone to, uh, I don't know, the northern, uh, northern states. But you don't choose, you know, for other people. And some people even say, like, how could you move to Russia? Uh, it's a terrorist state. It's, it's such a bad place. You know, I, I don't remember ever telling anyone uh, who wanted to move to the United States, why are you moving to the United States? You know, they're at war in Iraq and Afghanistan. I'm not a hypocrite like that. I would never dare to try to influence somebody's ultimate decisions, right? This is the most ridiculous thing you could say. Uh, politics aside... You know, you never should try to judge someone by the dreams that they have. I know many Afghans and many Iraqis who live in the United States. So it would be hypocritical of me to try to choose for them, even though I actually fought in the war. And I actually know what we did. I actually know uh, from experience how chaotic that whole situation was. I would never in my all my life decide for other people that they shouldn't follow their dreams. So if you're one of those people that say, why are you choosing Russia? Well, don't be a hypocrite. Now it's obvious that the most important person that I have in my life here in Russia and in my life now in general, because this is my new reality, is uh, Ksenia, my fiance. And she was kind enough to pack me lunch. She put chicken and rice and I have uh, water straight from the mountains. and Obviously, you're not going to want to be alone uh, when you're going to a new place or in life in general. And so her and I, we are making a great team in my opinion. We recently bit, uh, bought a plot of land with the house that I have to finish. So this is another great reason for me personally why I'm deciding to stay in Russia. I had already fallen in love with the country before I met her. But uh, after being with her for over two years now... I really believe that I can make my life here. You know, you need a partner, you need somebody to anchor you down to the land, and it's definitely going to be her. Uh, I just truly believe that now that I'm 34 years old, I see life in a different way than I did when I was 18 years old and in the war. Uh, when I was young, we, we didn't have time to perceive life for what it really is. It's absolutely very short. Even though Marines were dying at 18 to 22 years old, and in those ages in between, you never perceived life to be so short because you lived so fast and you died young and you had that mentality that if you died in war, you lived forever. And now that I'm old and a little bit busted and everything hurts, I truly see how short life is, right? I'm 34 years old and if I'm healthy enough to make it to 40, it would be a great achievement. But I, I want to be able to live to the 50s, to the 60s and make something of my new life. I want to build something. I want to give, uh, I want to have children and all of these things I want to have here in Russia. I can't imagine doing that anywhere else. It just doesn't, uh, it doesn't register in my brain to try anywhere else. I know I belong here. Something really cool about this location is that my friend carved Wild Siberia onto our wooden seat here. And uh, he's from the town, so he knows where my little spot is. But I think it's really awesome. Check it out. Well, it's no secret that I love to fish. And I didn't pick up fishing like I've said in the past. 
until now, right? I never had a hobby growing up, but I think that fishing is a great thing to heal the mind. So uh, I'm going to fix these rods. I have to um, change them a little bit so I can take you to my other lake and uh, we can go fishing. We can continue talking about the reasons why I'm choosing Russia, why I'm moving here, why I'm going to make my life here. Now that I have my rods ready, it's time to say goodbye to the Horseshoe Lake. Uh, by the way, somebody or something ate like a bird here. There are wild dogs and there is other animals that could potentially have done that. Uh, and this is obviously a really nice spot. I'll show you right before I go. It doesn't surprise me that something came to eat here peacefully. There's the awesome bench that I put in. I put actually a small beach. And the way the Horseshoe Lake is, this is one side, then it goes down the other way and it makes that U or Horseshoe Lake design. It's going to be super, super clean uh, in the summer and this will reflect. You can already see reflection already, but where we're going is on the other side of the train tracks closer to Lake Baikal. We're going to go fish over there in the swamplands. Lake Baikal is right here. You can see it from where I am. The sun has risen beautifully over Lake Baikal. Let's go talk more about why I love Russia and why I'm deciding to stay. Now it's very dangerous to come here. Uh, if you're not from around here and you decide to walk in this area that you think is nice and solid, you might end up getting eaten up by a hole. I made a video in the past showing just how dangerous these swamps, uh, these swamps are. You know, just when you think it's safe, you can end up stepping in the wrong place and just sinking in. I'm going to be very, very careful and make my way across this area through places that I know for sure are not going to sink on me. But that is another reason why I absolutely love Russia. It challenges me. Even a walk to come fishing is a challenge. Uh, in my life, during the military, uh, I grew accustomed to surviving and getting the thrill of life through that kind of style, right? You live to fight another day. Well, in Russia, I've always said it. It's not on easy mode, you know? This is the swamplands. This is... You'll get swallowed up here fishing. There's a lot of tales of people losing their lives here. Um, and, well, I guess I find comfort in that. I'm not trying to scare you or overplay it. But actually, it is what it is. Now, this was recently burnt. This was not burnt last time I was here. The firefighters do burn it up to uh, clean the ground but also to make sure that things can uh, grow a little bit healthier. No idea what happened, but we're making our way to another little spot where I like to fish. Uh, so yeah, reason number two, Russia is challenging. I don't like that easy life. Life has no meaning if it's just given to you so easily. Perhaps it's a little bit too stoic, but it is what it is. Wow. And this is actually still burning. I'm here to investigate. I'm not going to touch anything. I don't want to incriminate myself, but uh, I guess it's not, it's just smoking. The, the fire is long gone. This area all burned. Now I'm not sure if this was actually by the firefighters. This could have been somebody's mistake. Somebody's fire got out of control. Uh, here in Russia, people do camp out People do uh, sometimes cause that kind of chaos. Uh, you can see somebody was burning there. Uh, some other buddy had another camp here. So yeah, you never know. But if this does grow out of control, I'll get out of here. The reason why I have two rods is, well, one, I'm going to be fishing for pike and perch. And the other one is for roach fish, for saroshka. I want to put some of those fish in that secret lake that I have. Um, but I want you to see my background and how beautiful the scenery is, right? We know that behind us it is burning, but up there you have a marble quarry and the mountains are actually still filled with snow. 
I love this place. This, I come here to breathe the fresh air uh, and I'm going to start fishing now and I'm still going to be talking but just know that I'm not here to catch fish. I'm here to clear my mind. My ultimate goal is not to hook a fish on but actually just to clear my mind and have a beautiful morning. The sun is rising right over the largest lake in the world in fresh water, in volume. This is Lake Baikal. We are on the shores of it basically because this lake feeds into that lake. Now let's get a, let's get fishing now. I have to put a little worm here and cast it out and just let it sit and then cast out with this one and just fish and have fun. This is going to be the first cast. I put a lure on that looks like a roach fish, like a saroshka. Because right now in the mornings, the perch, the pike, that's what they're hunting, right? That's what they eat. So I'm trying to mimic a hurt small f uh, fish that they would eat. I could cast a thousand times here, listening to the birds, watching uh, just the, all around the nature that's around us. It's just nonstop for me. And I could be gone for hours and hours here. Uh, of course, I have to tell Xenia that I'm going to be gone for that long. But in summer, when everything dries up, I go to my campsites that I made during the year and I'll just sleep out in nature, right? This is what I like about Russia, especially here in Siberia, that no man is going to bother you. No man is going to uh, touch your things. So if you have a campsite, uh, essentially it's free for you to, to come and go as you want and nobody's going to disturb those things. Uh, I think it's called the Taiga Law, the Law of the Taiga, uh, where you don't mess with people's things. So... If we were in Los Angeles and I built a little small campsite out there, it would probably be overran by bums, uh, like homeless people. When I say bums, I mean homeless people. And uh, you guys already know how it is out there in Los Angeles. If you don't remember, roll the clip. I'm really interested in knowing that if this is the kind of stuff that you have in your country. So if what you're seeing now, if what I'm describing already exists in your country, comment down below where you're watching from. I think it's fascinating. Obviously, like I said, these kind of things do exist in other countries. I can make my life there and all of those stuff. But I'm interested in knowing where you're watching from and if this is the type of freedom and the type of uh, things that you like to do in your country and if they exist. I'm really loving the fact that there's not a lot of wind. I can cast longer, further, sorry. I came fishing to another location and I caught a pike. Uh, it's a pretty decent sized pike as you can see. I'm out here uh, next to Lake Baikal. When I let it go. There it goes. So we caught a fish. Oh, I thought I had a bite. It's probably a branch of some sort. Oh, actually, we have a we have a fish. It's a small. Oh, this is what the what I was been looking for. It's a roach fish, Saroshka. <laughs> Wow. So this guy was super ambitious. 
This is way too big for him. You see that? It's a roach fish. That's what we're looking for. Right? Sorry for the blood, guys. But he's way too ambitious. Look at that. Roach fish. I just want to clarify that the reason why that fish was bleeding is because that's a roach fish. That's a saroshka. He's going for bait larger than himself. I've never seen that happen. Uh, <sighs> blows my mind, but... Uh, all right, it's time to go have breakfast back at the Horseshoe Lake. Uh, you know, that just goes to show that sometimes when you're not succeeding or you're not getting what you want in one place, you have to move. So I moved from that other lake to here, caught two fish, and well, you see the results when you change your environment and uh, sometimes you could just hit, hit your goals. Thank you so much to Xenia for cooking the rice and chicken. That's barbecue chicken with rice. All right, I'm gonna finish this now. Well, that was my uh, curitza y ris. I think ris is rice, I'm not sure. That was my chicken and rice. Uh, it's about 9, 10 o'clock. We've been together since six in the morning. I actually left the house around five and you know, I wanted to continue talking about the reasons why I'm here, but to give you an example of reasons why other people come that I know, they come for religious things, they come for political things, economic things, uh, they find a woman online or something like this. And uh, I started thinking back from when I started thinking about Russia, and it was only Siberia. I was a young boy and I saw the Siberian tiger hunting. <sighs> I didn't even know that it was part of Russia. That's embarrassing to admit, but it's just the truth. And the second time that Russia came to mind was when uh, I get back from the war and we start thinking like, hey, we might have to go to war with Russia. Could you imagine how pathetic that is? That, uh, sorry, mosquitoes. How pathetic I was back then thinking that Russia gave a damn about us Americans. There's a big difference between America and Russia where Russians are not always thinking about how evil the rest of the world is. Um, they're not always thinking about like, oh, the enemies, the enemies. Uh, like in America, you're thinking about Iran, China, North Korea, Russia. Uh, I mean, Cuba back in the day, a bunch of uh, countries in, uh, in Africa. America is always pointing the finger at these countries like, oh, they're trying to get us. They're trying to get us. And uh, that's a big difference. Now that I'm in Russia, I realize how I enjoy the peace. If even during this huge conflict, if you're not going out and looking and, and pushing people to talk about it, you're not going to hear about it. And I like that. And I love that. So that's one big reason why I think Russia is so different than America and why I want to be in Russia is because it's actually very peaceful. The most aggressive thing right now in my life in Russia is these mosquitoes that are trying to suck my blood. Uh, but comment down below if you're from a country that sounds a little bit like America, where they're always at edge, where they're always like looking outwards towards people that are potentially trying to kill them apparently. Uh, because it's, I thought, or I think it's unique to the United States. I might be wrong, but like, uh, you know what, now that I think about it, Australia, Canada, England, these three countries usually do as Americans do. So if you're from these three countries, perhaps it's like that in your country. Um, let's continue on and talking about how my life has changed since I've been here. Uh, the opportunities that I've seen uh, as far as starting a new life and raising children, like I think I can actually start a family. I have uh, four brothers and sisters, one brother and three sisters. None of them are married, none of them have children, and none of them have a home of their own. None of, well, two of them have a car, you know, and like, it, they work so much, guys. Well, I think I just got a mosquito. There it is. They work so much, and they're not really accomplishing much as far as having their own things in life. And since I've been in Russia, I've kind of drawn a line that I'm going to follow, and I should be on the path 
of having a like a real life, like a fulfillment, a, a, a sense of fulfillment as like for myself, right? These are not things that society says I should have. These are things that I want to have. I don't really need a car, but I do want to start a family. And recently I've told you guys that I've bought a house. And as soon as everything's sorted out and the land and all the paperwork is done, I will show it to you. But like this is a dream come true for me. I never expected myself to commit and to be able to do something this early on. I'm 34 years old, but in America, unless you have like really, really hundreds of thousands of dollars, you're not gonna be, to, you're not gonna get to own a house or be able to start a family. There's a lot of irresponsible people that obviously have children, but they're not married, they don't have a job, and they're not really about taking care of those kids. So we already know that problem. That exists everywhere in the world. I'm just saying, I'm not gonna be that. I'm not gonna be that guy. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this conversation. Uh, perhaps it was a little bit dragged on. Perhaps it was a little bit off topic from the kind of stuff that I usually produce. But usually I do talk about uh, certain things like that, right? I feel like I've covered many topics. And if you don't know, you can go look back on my channel and see my most recent videos. Uh, you know, a future video that's coming out is how to travel to Russia. I finally got my two passports sorted out and I'm gonna tell people how they can travel to Russia to visit. You should never come here to live without first knowing what you're getting yourself into. So from the Horseshoe Lake here in Siberia and Russia, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for being part of the community. Expect a video this Friday. Expect a video also uh, Sunday and a live on Saturday, all right? Goodbye.